Hey, I'm Dana. I am a sculptor living in Austin, Texas, and uh, I've made all kinds of stuff and thought I would show you guys how I do some things. Here I am casting plaster into a four-piece silicone rubber and plasti paste mold. Um, at uh, I'm using Puritan pottery plaster, and uh, what I'm doing is I'm, I've got some aluminum all thread, and I'm making some little stanchions, basically, to hold the all thread in place inside the mold uh, to strengthen those parts, the neck, you can see the arm, and in the mold on the other side there, the legs. You just have to put metal into one side of each part of the mold, and you make these little stanchions uh, by mixing some water and some plaster a lot thicker than you would normally mix plaster. So I basically mixed up a paste, and then I make these little towers. I make a little blob in my hand, and I put it in the mold, and I set the all thread into it, and then I close off the top of it to get it to stay in there. And then I I'm careful to try to carve down the sides so that uh, the when I backfill it, the plaster will flow through all of those parts. Uh, otherwise, it'll get jammed up and uh, you won't get a good casting. So I've got all my uh, armature inside my pieces, and I'm just mixing up some plaster here. This is Puritan pottery plaster. It's good. It's a good kind of medium plaster, uh, very versatile. I, I like it. I haven't been using it for a long, long time. Um, I used Hydrocal mostly, but it's hard to patch Hydrocal afterwards, and so I found Puritan, and I, I really like it. So I'm putting in a layer inside the molds with a brush. Uh, and that basically is pushing all that plaster into the surface detail um, so that uh, you don't get any air bubbles. So I just go over the whole mold and really try to make sure that I'm just getting a layer in everything. So once that layer is in everything, um, I let the plaster kind of gel up, um, but I don't want it to be too hard. And then I join those parts together. I'm careful to clean the seams up and uh, you know make sure that I don't have a whole lot of plaster in there to make a giant mess and keep them from seating together properly. I need them to seat together in as close to the right spot as possible. So once they're together, then I take some of the more of the wet plaster and I start dumping it in the molds and slushing it around to get a, a hollow casting. Um, and uh, so I just pour it in and then roll it around and pour it out. And, uh, you know, I do that a few times. Um, and then I usually put the feet down on the table with some Vaseline and just kind of stick them down um, so that that's uh, kind of set there for the next phase. So I'm just cleaning up the seam there. And before this plaster sets up entirely, um, I have one more step that I want to do uh, with this batch. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little tower on the top of the bottom piece, the piece that's stuck down to the table. I'm going to make a little tower. Maybe you've heard of a Roman joint before. This is not a Roman joint. A Roman joint is made to come apart, um, and this is not going to come apart. But I am going to make a little tower in this setting up plaster as it's going through this kind of thickened phase. And that tower is going to help my two halves of my mold, uh, of my casting rather, lock together nicely. Um, and when the plaster is in this phase, it's uh, it's kind of like icing. It's really fun. You can, you can carve it. Um, so you can kind of blob it on, get it as tall as you want, uh, and then come back and, and kind of whittle it down with the, uh, with the plaster knife um, to get the shape that you want. And I'm, I'm making sure that I have room all the way around it so that my top part will seat down on there. I don't want anything to keep it uh, from getting, uh, you know, getting all the way down. And then I'm making sure to keep my, my little casting sprue open there too. That's the little vent going off to the side. Okay, so uh, I've loosened it from the from the base, and I'm closing up the mold. I'm I'm just using some um, hex, whoa, some hex uh, bolts and some wing nuts to close up the mold. Um, and uh, you can see I've just used rubber bands on the other parts, and uh, and it holds together just fine. So then I'm pouring some plaster down into that little vent hole. That's actually the hole made by where the armature went into the uh, into the piece. 
Um, but I pour some plaster in there and then kind of roll it around and then dump out the excess. I, I don't want the top half to be solid because it'll be too heavy and it'll break the ankles on this delicate little sculpture. So I need the top half to be uh, hollow. So, uh, you know, I just wait a couple hours. Um, Puritan sets up kind of slowly. Um, so you have to wait until it gets good and hot and, uh, and then, you can, then you can do the demold. Um, demolding, you just have to be patient. You can't pry too hard on anything or you're going to break it. So it's a, it's a, delicate, uh, it's a delicate thing and uh, you just kind of have to go slow and, and be patient. You can see I'm having a bit of a hard time getting that last piece out there. And uh, I don't want to break it and I can't see the piece so I don't know how hard I'm pulling on it. So I decided to go ahead and take the rest of the rubber off so that I could grab right onto the plaster and, uh, and pull it out of there. And, and that worked pretty well. When the piece is fresh out of the mold, I like to go ahead and do a little bit of initial cleanup, kind of scrape down some of the flanges and uh, get rid of any you know, blobs of plaster that, um, that I don't want while it's nice and soft. So before I can add more plaster to this casting to patch up the seams, I have to soak it in water. It needs to be really thoroughly soaked. Otherwise, when you add plaster to it, it's gonna just pull all the moisture out of that plaster instantly, and it's not gonna set up right, and it'll be a very different consistency than the rest of your, uh, the rest of your piece. So you just wanna soak it really good. And then I mix up a small batch of plaster. I usually mix it a little thicker than I would for a casting mix. And, um, and I go with my little plaster knife and try to, try to make it look better. Try to close up the seams, um, close up some of the sculpting marks, kind of blend some of the crevices together. I try sometimes to go across the forms and then sometimes with the forms. This is the step that allows each piece to be unique. Um, and so I just try to have a little fun with this and uh, make it look good.